Here we are, FMT 100, Unit 8, Section 8.1, Shaft Alignments. So, for bearings, if you call back to bearings, you know, however many minutes or whatever it was for everybody, I said that one of the one of the items that could that would could put more load on a bearing than would normally be present during normal operations is misalignment, misalignment of the shaft, pulleys, belts, whatnot. So misalignment is huge. So if you misalign something, not only can you you're, are you going to have uh, faster wear of the belts and pulleys slash shivs, uh, you're also going to have greater wear on your bearings. So alignment is huge and it really really is worth the investment in making sure everything is aligned properly and to the best of your ability and you will also get better with practice so whenever there's an opportunity that pops up jump on it and it sounds stupid I want you to have fun with it uh, I actually made I actually made uh, shaft alignment kind of my my meditation while I, while I was in the field and uh, I kind of miss it right now I could kind of use some of that meditation but anyway shaft alignment so we need proper shaft alignment so we can transmit power efficiently through belts pulleys chains sprockets and couplings and each part has to be aligned correctly to ensure that the power is transmitted efficiently. So if you've got two shivs, to the both shivs or each shiv needs to be properly aligned. Uh, keep in mind, we can have more than one shiv in use. So the more shivs you have, all of those shivs have to be properly aligned with each with each other in order for everything to work efficiently. Couplings. Couplings are nice because typically it's just one and two. You've got a fixed point, usually like a pump, and then you've got the the motor or the engine. And usually, usually our source of power is the thing that's going to be adjusted to make any corrections to alignment. So just throwing it out there, trying to get everybody familiar with a lot of that beforehand. So here we go. Uh, we're, they're, they're starting off with pulleys first. So we've got a, a perfect pulley alignment on the top. Notice everything's nice and straight. Our pulleys, our shivs are parallel. We can see that because our pulley has no kinks or angles in it. The next one down, we've got offset alignment. And in this case, our, our shafts are, are parallel, but our pulleys, our shivs themselves, are not in the same plane. So this is offset. And now we're just having all sorts of fun. The center one is the non-parallel misalignment. So if you look at it, you could almost say that the, the center line, if you were to take the, the center line and inter where it intersects the cross section of our shiv, the midpoint of the shiv if you're looking down on it. So I'm looking for right here and in the center right here. They're almost, almost, almost in the same plane. But more importantly, our shafts are no, are no longer parallel. So that's kind of a bummer. The shafts may still be in the same plane, but they're no longer parallel. So we've got this non-parallel misalignment. And to con continue to skewer things even more, then we have a, an angular misalignment. So in this case, our shafts may be parallel in one plane, but they're not parallel in another. So if we kind of go up to our non-parallel, our, our shafts may be in the same uh, maybe maybe parallel in the vertical plane, so they're they're both horizontal, but in the on the horizontal plane, one of them's kicked in, kind of like our our image here, and then on our angular misalignment, uh, things are just going goofy. Uh, you know, 
we've got one that is just doing its own thing. It's probably kicking up or kicking down in relationship to the other one. So these are our three types of, of pulley misalignment. So we've got offset, non-parallel, and angular. And yes, you get to see all of them. Now the fun news is typically it's offset that is the biggest one. Uh, trying to get the pulleys and the shivs in, in the, all in the same plane. If you over tighten or put too much tension on the belt, you usually start getting into the non-parallel misalignment, just so you know. So we, when we start looking at pulleys, we can also think of the same things going on with chains. So uh, pulleys and sprockets, we get to get to consider the offset, the parallel, and the angular when we're doing these. Um, each is going to have its its own unique set of how am I going to fix it. Like I said, offset is usually easiest. You're just pushing the shivs in and out to bring them so they're in, they're parallel. Uh, the shafts are already made parallel. For a parallel problem, you're going to want to change and get the shafts parallel to each other. Once again, we're still looking at the motor. Motor, motor is usually the easiest thing to move. And if you start looking at a parallel issue, uh, my recommendation would be pick either the front or the rear. The front happens to be where the pulley's at. The rear is the other side. And you're going to move one or the other. You're going to basically, if you want to move the back, which is usually the easiest, you keep the front a little tight and you kick the back in, either in or out. You'll have to look at it. I'm not there. You'll have to go, okay, if I go move the motor this way, it's going to have the opposite effect. And you're going to have to go and look at it and, and use your, your technical skills to go, okay, I go this way, I'm going to have the opposite back effect. If I go the other way, that pulley is going to go the opposite. Angular, same concepts. Whatever you do is going to have an opposite effect on our pulley, but you're going to have to slow down and think about your actions. And it is okay to do a move, come back and check it and go, no. The easiest way to check these is with a straight edge. Just like before in uh, the pulleys and shivs, uh, the first mechanical uh, power transmission on unit uh, six, straight edge is the best way to go. If everything's flush and everything has an equal measurement you're in par your parallel, so away we go, and you don't have an offset. You may still have an angular, but at least you know you are good to go on offset and, and parallel. So offset and align misalignment. And we're just going to kind of recap. I like the details on this one, so I tried to fill you in, but here we go. Uh, as it says, the two shafts are parallel but the faces of the pulleys are not on the same axis. axis. Um, straight edge is your buddy. You're going to put it on the face of the pulley or sprocket. Once again, I would recommend starting on the, uh, the driven side. So like your pump, your blower, whatever else, not the motor. So place your straight edge, straight edge on your driven component and then move your driver into 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 location unless it's really big and then yes you're going to have to do both but straight edge and i'm not sure how i got suddenly to angular that there is skipping over a few slides It's really upsetting is I already checked these. Okay. Angular misalignment. Yep. Out comes a, a level. And you, you get to, to level the pulleys and the shafts, ideally. You, if you can get a, a level into shafts, uh, do it that way. And you're going to 
level the sha level the component or components until the shafts are parallel parallel and then you're going to check them for offset and parallel so you you're working in a full 3d world here and the best deal is is you start working on one one dimension and you're going to get it down so you're only working in one well t technically it's two dimensions but you're going to fix one problem before you go to the next that is the best way to, to approach it instead of trying to go oh i can do all this all at once uh, do one at a time so uh but as you can see you start using straight edge straight edge is your buddy so for your basic stuff pulley and sprocket all you're going to need is a straight edge and a level So that's the good news there. When we're doing coupling alignment, so we're joining or having our two shafts joined together, and we can either do a, a hard coupling or a flexible coupling. Flexible couplings are nice because you, you still have to get everybody aligned, but it's not as critical. When you start doing a hard coupling, and there's different styles of it out there, uh, it gets a little bit more tricky, so you you are required to be in tighter and tighter tolerances. Well, how tight? Well, for a, a, a soft coupling, a tenth of an inch is good enough. Awesome. Away you go. Call it a day. For a hard coupling, a rigid coupling, they're looking at less than a thousandth of an inch difference in, in any in any aspect of being misaligned less than a thousandth of an inch yeah that's insane but it can be done one of our problems though is if our footing is jacked up the footing on our components so either our motor or our our driven side if our footing is not good all of what we're doing is just tossed out the window so we've got soft foot, and it's where one of the, the feet, the mounting brackets, if you will, that is used to support and level the unit is jacked up. So it's either bent or poorly manufactured. Uh, it's bent, it's usually due to improper handling or improper installation. Hopefully not by you guys, that's the hope. But it happens, it happens, own it, and we'll go from there. And it, that has to be uh, addressed before we can go any further. Um, and we've got the same type of problems with soft foot as we do everything else. We've got parallel, angular, springing, induced. So here we go. Hang on. And they're not going to go over it. That's right. Crap. So parallel. Uh, the feet aren't parallel, literally. So we've got an, we've got an issue where... We got to keep all, all our feet going in the same same direction as our our pulley, or our, in this case, our coupling. So if our couplings are like 90 degree to the axis of a shaft, in this case of our driven shaft, then the feet of our driver need to also be perpendicular, 90 degrees to the axis of the shaft of that driven piece of equipment. They can't they can't be janked off. Angular is pick everything and then just make it go all over the a place and skewing a skewed uh, springing hmm, springing is it kind of bounces. Yes, it is as the name implies. It'll be fine and then you can compress it as you are trying to get everything set so as you tighten it continues to tighten and then induced is as the piece of equipment is moving for whatever reason that is when our foot or feet decide to do their stupid stuff so that's kind of the the drama behind uh soft foot very frustrating but usually not too bad to to get done 
So if we look at a coupling in the upper left, so these are our two coupling faces, and these are perfectly aligned. Both shafts are on the same axis. Axis. The faces, the faces, the coupling faces themselves are parallel. Life is good. And the easiest, in quotes, misalignment to to correct is a parallel offset. In this case, our shaft face or our shaft are misaligned. They're they're parallel to each other, and our coupling faces are parallel to each other, but the center line of our shafts are not on the same line. So they're not perfectly in line. That is our offset. So if we go to the top right, angular misalignment, kind of think of this one where um, the shafts are on the same plane. They're on the same level. And again, the shaft axis is, they're not in the same line. And they're kind of, they're kind of broken apart like you were trying to open up a, a fortune cookie. You kind of split them apart. And that's what's happened here. So you get to choose one side or the other. And you're going to, in this case, the best way to do it would be to kick a rear end over. Once again, you're looking, God, I got to get a new phrase for that. You're going to look at the, the motor side and kick the ass in of the motor to close up so we can get the face of our coupling parallel to each other. If we look at the bottom, this is the glorious offset. This is the holy grail of them. And this is typically where we start. <laughs> so nothing's on the same plane. Nothing's on the same axis. Everything is just wopsy worby. And from here, we get to go, okay, um, we're going to do our best just to get the faces so at least the coupling faces are parallel. And then we'll start working to get everything tightened up so we can get to the upper left. And there's the good news is, is there's different ways of doing it. So that's the good news. So don't think you are tied into just one. So let me make sure I got that one. Yep. All right. So here we are. So this is a nice little deal of a vertical misalignment. You can see the front of each piece. Our motor motor front is is higher than our the rear of the motor, and on the gearbox, the front of the gearbox is higher than the rear of the gearbox. So this is an an angular misalignment. Our vertical offset. While our, the front and rear of our motor and the front and rear of our gearbox are parallel to our vertical. That's nice. I'm sorry. Parallel to our horizontal plane. So they're, they're level. But if you look at our shafts, our shafts are not on the same level. So once again, we're going to look at the motor and we are going to raise our motor. So we can get our motor shaft at the same level, the same plane as the shaft of our gearbox. So that's what we would be looking at for there. Uh, and I am now frantically, there we go. And this would be one of the ways we're going to do it. We're going to use the dial indicator method, and that is our next topic.